What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making a video about... About what? <laughs> so today's video is going to be about... Let's get over it a little bit. Let's get over it. Oh, okay. Welcome. So it's going to be about our bugs. Yes, I said bugs. If you guys are freaked out about bugs, then this video might not be for you, but I do okay, I gotta go, to... actually. <laughs> I gotta go, actually. I don't like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your spot. So on top of all my reptiles and amphibians that I have here, I do have a collection of bugs. I have feeder insects and also pet bugs. So I am going to be showing both of them in this video along with their enclosures. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Okay, so here they are. I have isopods, springtails, praying mantis, my dubey roach colony, and also fruit flies. Okay, now let's get started with my favorite, the orchid mantis. Okay, there we go. So here we have two pink orchid mantis and also a green banded flower mantis. So here is one of them. He is hanging at the very top right there. So these mantises are one of my favorite because they are one of the several mantises that resemble a flower. So these come from the tropical forest of Southeast Asia. And look at that little guy, he's so awesome up there. And um, their scientific name is Hymenopus Coronatus. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but I'll put it down there so you guys can see um, the spelling of that. And a cool interesting fact about these guys is that they, although they look like a flower, they don't hang out by flowers like they're doing right now like in the wild because that's going to be harder for them to catch insects. They resemble a flower so that it will attract insects so it's easier for them to catch their prey. So I thought it was kind of interesting because they look like a flower. You'd you think that they'll be hanging out by a flower like this, but I have them in captivity so they're just climbing around this, but in the wild they're so much different. And I do have two of them. I keep them separate because they can be cannibalistic, meaning that they will eat each other. Um, so in the wild and also in captivity, they do eat crickets, flies, fruit flies, beetles, and bees. Right now, I am feeding them fruit flies because they are still uh, small little um, nymphs right now. I think they did like one or two molts by now, so um, they will get a lot bigger than this. The females do get a lot bigger than the males, like twice in size, so I can't wait for them to get that big because that's going to show them the real nice pink colors. And also, they're going to be a lot you know, easier to see because right now they're kind of small. And you guys need to see this one as well. So this one is right there. This one looks a little bit bigger than the other one. I have them housed in this 32 ounce deli cups with a screen, custom screen that I did on the side here for extra ventilation. And I do have them with paper towel for that humidity that, that they need. They also have these ventilated lids with a screen on top so that they can hang upside down. And next up is this green banded flower mantis. And to be honest, guys, we did get him for free after we purchased the four mantises that we got. My friend got the other two. So these mantises will grow a lot bigger than this as well. And the females are bigger than the males. Same with these mantises. These are these have green and white spots and also have a bright orange wing. So I think they also resemble flowers as well as they get older, but they're not as cool as the orchid mantises, but still cool. I know I took them in, so I'm gonna take care of them. Next up are my two cultures of isopods. So let's get started with my favorite. Right here are the Porcilius ornatus high yellow isopods. So I only got a culture of six at the show, Repticon show. And you guys would be ex kind of surprised. These are really expensive. Like for 10 of them, they were asking for $100. Like $100 for 10 of them, that's crazy. So I only got six, which was like 50 bucks. but. Here they are, guys. Look how awesome looking they are. Look at this one right there. Kind of curled up in there. And the other one is right there. The other ones are probably hiding someone here, but I don't want to bother them. And you're probably wondering, what? $100 for roly polies? I can find them under some rocks in my backyard. Okay, guys, have you guys ever seen these kind of roly polies in your backyard? Yeah, I don't think so. These are really fancy roly polies. They're really expensive and rare, so especially that they are high yellow. They are still not full-size adults yet. As adults, they will be one inch, guys. One inch isopods. Those are huge. And also, they are going to be a lot brighter and yellow, so I can't wait for that, guys. So right now, um, I just have them housed in this for now, which I think should be good until... Um, you know, they start breeding and they have a lot in here, but this should be good for now for only a culture of six. And I do have some leaf litter in here with some sphagnum moss, soil, some rocks. Oh, there's another one right there. It's crazy to think that I now collect isopods because as a kid, I would always just go in my backyard and look for roly polies and I would just be fascinated by them. But now I have some awesome 
roly polies here. Look at this. They do not curl up in a ball like the other isopods. That's how much they'll curl up right there. That much. That's it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to my next one. So over here, I have the Armadillium SP Montenegro isopod. So here is kind of a more established culture. There is a lot of babies in here. Let's see if we can spot some. Well, first, let me show you the adults first. So the adults are going to be under this log. There they are. Really cool little guys. I love the sides of them. Look at those colors on the sides. And also the spotting on top of their backs. It's so cool. So baby isopods will just be hiding in this leaf litter or in the soil. So it's kind of hard to see them. But I did miss it down a little bit. So you should be able to see some walking around. The really, really small ones right there are springtails. I did add some springtails in here. Um, just to the clean up a little bit. If there's any kind of molds growing in here, they can just eat it. But let's see if we can find some baby isopods in here. Okay, I see them. Do you guys see them right there? Right next to the log. They're so tiny. But those will grow up to be like the other ones. And there is a lot in here, guys. There's like so many in here, but they're kind of really hard to see because they're all hidden. And there's another one right there. And notice how they are white in color, like a little bit lighter than the adults. Um, as babies, that's how they are. They're white. And as they grow up, they will change in colors. And sorry I'm so shaky, I can't keep the camera still. <laughs> but yeah guys, there are my two cultures of isopods. And I do add the isopods to my live vivariums. They are basically like a cleanup crew. They'll clean up the enclosure here. So also with the springtails, which brings me to my next culture that I want to show you. So yes, here are my two cultures of springtails. So if you do have live vivariums, I do recommend that you add springtails and isopods to that. So that they can clean up the enclosure and just maintain it. So here they are. I don't want them to go all over the place. I have them in small containers here. Okay. And then before I open this, when you guys see rice in there and it's molding up, that's basically their food. They don't eat necessarily the rice. They eat the mold that grows on the rice. So you can see all those. There's so many in there. See those little white things walking around? Those are all the springtails. So... I just add them in my live variants and same thing goes in there. I don't want to open that one, but same, the same thing. I have two cultures in here. And this right here is a prime example of the mold that grows in enclosures. See the mold that's growing on the roots right there of this pothos vine. I'm going to add some springtails in there. Well, there's already some in here, but I'll just go ahead and add some more so they can take care of that. Okay, and now moving on to my feeder insects. So here I have a culture of fruit flies. I do have them dated from oldest to newest over here. So I'll show you my oldest one. This is almost, almost time to be thrown away. I'm just gonna feed those off and then this will be thrown away. There's not much activity going on down there. And then my newest one, not gonna see much because I just made this like yesterday. So See, it's all fresh down, down there. And also I have a lot of new fruit flies at the very top there. So I decided to culture my own fruit flies because one, it saves me a lot of money. And two, I have an unlimited amount of fruit flies to feed off to all my dark frogs and my brain mantises. If you guys wanna see a video on how I culture fruit flies, I did make that video, so click right there to watch the video. I also forgot to mention that stuff at the bottom is called bug blade. What bug blade basically does is kills and prevents any kind of mice that are trying to crawl into my other, you know, fresh cultures over here. So for say, for example, this one is going to have mites. I'm not sure if you can see them, but they're really small bugs that I climb at the very top here and eat the bottom um, food down there. So yeah, it basically just kills them and I don't want them to spread to my other cultures here. And the last insects that I culture are dubia roaches so i only do fruit flies and dubia roaches i used to do mealworms but i just stopped doing it um so dubia roaches here i have a uh, quite a few adults in here and i don't have a heating source here because my room is already hot as it is so i've been noticing that they've been breeding like crazy with just the room temperature in here and i do have some water crystals in there for them to drink and um i just give them a wide variety of foods in there so they go crazy over that food but look how big these guys are when I first started this culture was like, uh, I think like a year ago, I only had like six females and two males. 
and now I just have so many of them like it's kind of hard to open but there's so many in here now a lot of babies too Okay, I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting grossed out by this, so let's go ahead and get this closed up. Dubia roaches are really healthy for reptiles, so that is why I breed them. And I also covered the sides here with paper because Dubia roaches like it darker. Okay guys, and that sums up all the bugs that I have here. Eric, come back now. I right, come back now, alright. <laughs> I guess. I just got the whole video. I'm back. <laughs> alright guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Today's post notification shout out goes to... Goes to who? Sorry if I pronounced it wrong, but it's... Romani Gazzato. I'll put your name right there because I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But thank you so much for turning the post notifications. Whoever else wants a post notification shout out, be sure you turn them on and then comment, comment down, down below, below when done so we know who has done that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.